Hi everyone, Basil George from Institute of Health and Management. I would like you to get introduced to intensive care nursing in Australia. We will talk you through <coughs> intensive care settings in Australian hospitals. See, we got Jinsi Joseph, who is working as a clinical nurse specialist in one of the metropolitan hospitals in Melbourne. I would like to introduce Jinsi Joseph to you so that she can talk. Hi Jinsi. Uh, yeah, thank you for accepting our offer and coming over here for today's meeting. You're welcome. Yeah. I would like to know more about how critical care nursing in Australia look like. It's very um, interesting. Definitely, the critical care nursing in Australia is definitely um, much different from what you see back home. Um, I did my nursing a, a few years ago to be very frank and then I did um, I completed my nursing in 2000 so coming over from there to um, today's critical care nursing is entirely different it's um, very technological now everything um, is you know very very much highly um, technological the way that you do things the way that you actually learn things is actually different so um, looking at me, like, you know, how I did all these things, um, it's basically, I did my training in India. I went to New Zealand and did my surgical nursing for a couple of years, like three or four years. And then from there, I moved into intensive care nursing. Each country has got different um, criteria and requirements to do critical care nursing. When I was in New Zealand, it wasn't that necessary to do your specialized courses there to be proficient in your care. But then um, I moved to Australia after doing intensive care for about six years and it wasn't necessary or compulsory to do the course there. So when I came into Australia, you know, after your nursing, you can keep actually upgrading yourself with your clinical experience, knowledge and skills um, as an ongoing education, the hospitals will actually help you and provide you the education that you need. The only thing that you have to have is to have that um, proactiveness from your side. Like you wanna, you have to picture yourself to see where you want to be in this career or in this critical care nursing in the next ten or five years, five years time. So that means that. Um, when you come into, when I came into Australia, I joined this one of the, as you said, one of the major hospitals in Melbourne. And then um, the journey from there was very interesting and exciting for me, to be very honest. Because um, after that one year, they offered me this course. Like they, they just put it out there for you. Like, you know, there is a course that which makes you actually proficient in what you're doing, self confident in what you're doing, and then when you look at the nurses who already did the course it actually makes you feel like man i want to be that confident to do that job like you know the people respect you the nursing um, back home is really definitely different in um, in here australian nursing because the doctors actually respect you the whole team respect you and you're part of the team in that decision making because i would say the nurses get um, a lot of autonomy in their care as well because they get to uh, make decisions for their patients and then when the doctors come around and do the ward round as a team and they make certain decisions and they will ask you what do you think about it you know what's your opinion about it yeah. and that actually surprised me and that was like a very big reward for me because you never hear that in India or you know any anywhere else so this is this is what this is the basic um, requirement that you need to upgrade your skills and knowledge and when you are actually equipped with um, this knowledge and confidence the people actually start respecting you and then you get a lot of autonomy and then <clears throat> that importance in the healthcare um, system um, it actually makes you more proud and ultimately the way that you equip yourself you know you can actually do your um, you can actually um, take different pathways, career pathways. Like you can actually yeah. enroll yourself into Master of Nursing. So that's what I did. 
So, um, and then he, they actually designed this course with certain exit points that, you know, yeah. you can take a break and you can actually uh, have a bit of time with the family and then you can come back and continue with the course yeah. from where you actually stopped and then you can actually um, get there um, to complete your master's yeah. of nursing. So I took an exit point yeah. um, because I had some responsibilities with the family and everything. And at any point, the beauty of it is like at any point, I can actually go back and start from where I stopped yeah. and then continue that. And then at the end of the day, by doing all these scores and equipping yourself, you're basically investing on your own patient care yes. and the, um, the um, proficiency of your nursing care that you're actually providing for your patients. Yeah. So ultimately, you're, um, uh, you're actually um, improvising yourself, improvising yourself and, and because, yeah. um, articulating yours, uh, your life and your career into a way where in which you are recognized and you feel proud of what you're doing. Exactly. So, and it's a great yeah. reward. And when you see the patients, like, you know, when you know what is actually happening with your yes. patient and the what is um, actually going wrong and you will be the first one to pick it up rather than the doctor yes. looking at the numbers or the ECGs or the blood results you will be because you're you're very well aware of what's yeah. actually happening with your patient and you're actually current um, current with your practice and your knowledge and uh, because all these courses actually help you to think critically and then you look evidence-based practices like you know you compare yes. all the current researches that's available in the world and you update yourself with all that knowledge and then when something goes wrong with your patient you'll be the first one to pick it up and you'll be the first one to notice that to the doctors and that actually earns you respect yes that's true. and um, people will acknowledge you and then this is a very rewarding career when you see a smile on your patient it actually gives you a big reward um, well, um, as we have talked about the education, how we gonna equip you to work as a critical care registered mm -hmm. nurse. So, I mean, can you, will you be able to draw some differences now while uh, working as a registered nurse without having a advanced certification? And after you certified and you have become a proper critical care registered nurse after kind of education. How do you see that difference? Um, uh, how it impact? I mean, how people look at you, as well as how it will affect the care that you are providing. Definitely. Um, when I started, as I said, when I started nursing in Australia, I wasn't a specialized nurse in that particular um, specialty. But when I did, when I, um, and then, but saying that, I had experience in that area. I had probably around eight years of experience. To be very honest, I was doing it because I've been doing this thing. Like, you know, people have been teaching me how to do certain things, yeah. how to look at certain numbers, and then I didn't have a deep and rooted knowledge of why we're actually yes. doing this. There is a lot of whys behind it. But then, the minute I started the course in Australia, it actually helped me to think critically. My, you know, the, the thoughts that you actually bring to your patient care is very different um, in an ordinary general ward setting. Yes. Like, you know, because there is a lot more um, task focus. Yes. Because you have to do certain things in a, and finish, finish it all in yeah. a certain time frame. Yes. With five or six or seven patients. Yes. But in critical care, it's not like that. It's just one patient and you just have to look at, you get enough time to look at your patient right from top to the bottom yes like you know the numbers the blood results look at the patient top to bottom physical assessment everything everything and then when you actually start this course this course actually takes you through the system like you know like we um, learn as a in in our nursing um, course like we start from the you know nervous system and the, um, all the systems like it takes you in detail and it actually tells you where you actually apply all this knowledge into your practice yes. and how to apply this knowledge into your practice. So every time you hit one point, oh, this is because of that. 
Yes. I just learned it. Yes. And that makes a lot of sense. And you look at your patient and think, oh, that's why this patient was having tachycardia. Or that's why this patient was having um, the, the certain blood results high. So we actually start to connect. So this connecting capacity, I got it or I actually um, earned it yeah. from the course that I did. And, and, also, I, yeah, uh, and also adding to that, I mean, uh, being a critical care registered yeah. nurse, what I felt also doing this kind of a course will help you to think critically and analyze the situations. So back in back in the home country, what we used to say that, I mean, if there is a problem or any abnormality that we see, we just run to the doctor or the physician saying that um, this is a problem. But after doing this course, I realized we go to a doctor with the problem and a solution. So we make our solution, I mean, we, make, we, make, we will see according to the protocol and policies what the solution, the whether that can be workable. And if it is not working, we will approach the doctor with, I mean, what are the diverted pathways in which we can really resolve this problem. So it is not just the problem, we are not problem focused. It will help you to find a solution to a problem. So, I mean, that, that's a gross change in your mentality when you are taking care of a patient as a critical care registered nurse. And when you actually start connecting all these things together and putting everything, every dot, you know, it's basically a dot connection. Like when you actually start filling the dots and putting it together, it actually gives you a lot of um, confidence in, in what you're doing. And it also gives a lot of people around you um, that confidence that yes. you know something, you yes, know about true. your patient. Yeah. And that's how you earn respect from people yes. because they know that you are trying to learn something or you're actually putting a more effort in it and you're very proactive in what you're doing. Yeah. And that's how you earn respect. And to be very honest, doing this course in Australia helped me a lot. And um, I have to say this very particularly because there was a lot of people around you. Yeah. You're not alone. There is a lot of people around you to give you enough support. Like, yes. you know, there are so many people there. You can get support from educators there. Um, they stay, you know, even in a night shift, the hospital that I work, the educators stay up until 12 o'clock at night yeah. to be there and support you. And then there is a lot of senior staff and there is a lot of educators around. Doctors, they, they are actually very keen to give you education. Yeah. Um, so there is immense support there. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, adding to that, um, um, let's talk about... Um, rather than this uh, clinical competency or proficiency that this course is providing and on top of um, this one, what are the other scope like the career pathway if you want to discuss by doing such kind of a course in Australia, what are career options it opens to? Well, for us, you know, it was just a nursing. When we started, it was just a nursing and you start nursing and you'll be at the bedside forever and ever and ever. Yeah. And that's how it was for us. But then coming into uh, Australia, I realized, oh my God, this is not just a bedside nursing. Our career pathways are very different. And then you can have various immense amount of opportunities out there related to nursing. Like you can either go into research pathway, you can go into educational pathway, you can be a leadership role, you, know, you can be also on the administrative role. There are so many roles in there. And you, you know, when you actually enroll yourself into the Master of Nursing, after uh, the, you know, the first exit point, you can actually select the, which pathway that you want to go. Wanna go. Yeah. So which, you know, whatever interest that you are, and you know, if you like education, if you like leadership, if you like um, administration, whatever it is, it actually guides you and it keeps you really well to do that job. Yes. I feel like I mean, uh, be more specific. I would say that I mean this kind of a course and taking the course further, it will give you career pathways like being a team leader, being able to work as an associate nurse unit manager or a nurse unit manager, clinical nurse specialist. It will open up the opportunity to become a clinical nurse educator, and so on. I mean there are wide variety of opportunities that is getting opened only because you are doing some kind of upskilling in your career. So with the time shortage, we will try to wind up uh, our sessions for the day. But we will see you in another fortnight time uh, to discuss more about critical care. In the meantime, if you have any doubts or any clarifications regarding Australian critical care settings, please pop us a Facebook comment or uh, a message to us. Uh, we are happy to answer to all your queries. 
Thank you. See you again.